Hey guys, it's Lily May coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's Linda Rose coming to you live from Maine. I am super excited for today's episode. We have a lot of cool things planned and some fun things to announce too. Yeah, and I know that um, if you guys haven't seen the first like kind of episode um, of this month where we came up with the idea over our break um, between seasons, we came up with the idea to read a book or watch a movie um, and discuss it at the end of a month on our Q&A episode. Yeah, so this is our first discussion episode, which I think is super fun. We're so excited to try this out. So the book pick we did for this month was Because I Was a Girl by Melissa Dealey Cruz. Here is the book. It's such a pretty cover. Seriously, it's like a beautiful copy. Oh, yeah, you got one, too. Yeah, I do. Um, I um, How about we talk about why we picked the book? Because I think, uh, obviously, our show is about women empowerment and something we hugely focus on. I think it's really important to talk about kind of why we picked this book for anybody that hasn't read it or has never heard of it. Absolutely. And for anybody who's here in the chat, too, we would love to hear your opinions on the book. If you've read it or have read it in the past, just let us know, too. Um, I think one of the reasons we picked this book, Because I Was a Girl, um, is because it has so, so many stories in it of people, of women from, in, like, completely from being an actor from being an actress to being a chef and there's just a range of jobs that are or industries that are in here and this talks about kind of their experience and kind of what they struggled with going being in these jobs and kind of growing up to being where they are now yes absolutely sorry for that my christmas clock tries to chime every time i'm live it seems like um I wanted to pick this book because I think it's a great first book for our female empowerment book discussion. It talks about different important topics written by many different women, as Linda Rose is saying. I also love this book because it talks about the different struggles uh, females have faced through different multiple times of history, too. And overall, I think the book has a really powerful message, and I was really inspired while reading it. Yeah, and this book is um, also probably one of my favorite books, and I think that it is a book that I strongly, strongly recommend to anybody watching it. Absolutely. So for our next question for the day, we got, what were some of your favorite stories from the book? Um, I know there's one story that I loved, and it's actually one of the first few stories, um, but throughout reading the book, it kind of stuck with me, and that was Gloria Molina? I want to butcher it, but I don't think that's right. Uh, she's a politician, and there was a paragraph at the end, near the end of her story, that really um, stuck out to me. Gloria is Latino and is a politician, and with being um, Latina and also being a politician uh, and being a woman, being a politician, um, she describes in the story how difficult that was for her. And one of the paragraphs, um, one of her ending paragraphs, really spoke up to me, so I'm just going to read it really quickly. Um, we decided to push back. We informed the men that we would have a female candidate for the legislative seat and quickly went to action. While it had been my goal to manage the campaign, I ended up with the candidate. We recognized the challenges of running against men in our community, which included a lack of resources for endorsements. But, but facing those challenges, we strategized for each of them. It was not the first time that we Latinas recognized we would have to work twice as hard to be equal. Absolutely. I loved that story when I was reading it, and I think she is such a trailblazer and so amazing. And I also really loved how this book was formatted, too, with all the different stories. I think it was just really cool to read about everybody's different experiences, too. Yeah, and I think um, especially, I mean, obviously, it's one of my favorite stories um, from the book. Um, I think just um, realizing, like at the end, she said she realized that they're going to have to work twice as hard. I think that's uh, a really good realization and um, observation that they made and something they've grown up with. And I think that's really important that they they worked just as hard um, and even harder than the people, other people in their industry. And I think that's really important to do that in everyday life, wherever you are. Absolutely. So one of my favorite stories that I thought was super powerful was the one written by Leva Bray. 
Um, she is an award-winning author. I love the metaphors that she can included in this piece and the message was very strong and important. Um, another really powerful story I thought was one written by Holly Knight, a Grammy award-winning songwriter and producer. Um, she talked about the different challenges she had to overcome in the music industry as a female songwriter and how she made her mark in the music industry. And I just thought that was really informative and interesting. Yeah, and I think that it's really, really important, especially to have a bunch, bunch of different industries in this book, which is something that I love so much because it's interesting because there was like, I was expecting there to obviously be music and authors and actresses just because I feel like that's such a there's such a wideness of that but um when i saw that there was a chef in there that really shocked me and i was um, i was very happy about it and i think that's i think this book overall is just really good absolutely and i loved all the different authors and entrepreneurs who were in there too it was really cool to read their stories and i know another question we got is based on what we read what do you think motivated the authors to share their stories Oh, this is a super cool question. I think that the idea of empowering other women is really what inspired these females to start sharing their story. It's really amazing that these women were able to come together and make a book to empower other females. And I think this really shows that we're stronger together and we all need to continue inspiring and uplifting each other. And that's what our goal here is on Orchid Times to uplift and empower other females too. Yeah, I completely agree. And reading through everyone's stories and the metaphors and the um, uh, there were a few personifications in there as well. Um, and I think that the way everything just the way everybody just formed their stories together was really, really amazing. And I think something that really inspired them was just helping young girls um, who are afraid to be themselves. 100%. So um, the next question we have is, is there a quote that stands out to you from the book? Yes, I have to find it. Because <laughs> I have it, like I have like a million bookmarks in here. Yes, totally. I'm a bookmarker. I don't know why. Always have been. Same thing. I, I got these like little like sticky note things from uh, post-it notes and like they're perfect for marking books. Like I, I have some, but I just like never... <laughs> Never use them, I guess. Like half of this is literally ripped up paper, so. Same thing. I use the uh, flashcards more than I use my post-it notes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there um was a number one New York Times bestselling author, Victoria Aviar. I think is how you say it. And um, she had a uh, a quote. Um, just go read it because it, it was such a good. I'm like, it's a really good one. And it says, because I'm a certain type of girl, many doors are open to me. But because I am a girl, I know there are many more firmly shut. For one more day or forever, only the girls of the future will know. Oh, wow. That's an amazing quote. I I love it because it's, um, I think it's important, especially since um, that was in the uh, 1990s uh, section of the book. And I think that it's, important because there's um throughout the years throughout history women equality has been has not been used to just not be a thing and then it slowly became a thing and then we had the downfall with the roe v wade and now it's coming back up and i think it's it's an ongoing system of you know um going back up and down and i think that's important to realize that the girls of the future and the kids, the little girls now kind of have the future in their hands to make sure that the the next generation of girls can stay, can keep strong and keep building up women empowerment. Absolutely. And that's such an important topic to bring up. I remember uh, reading like the little kids stories in that book. It was so interesting to read their stories too. Yeah, I think it's just the range um, in this book is insane. And I think um, if you haven't read it, you really should, because it's a really, really good book. Absolutely. So a quote that I really loved in the book was, now we have voices, now we have platforms, now we have allies, 
now we have one another, now we fight. Uh, this quote is by Margaret Stoll. Um, this quote is really powerful and absolutely shows that we're stronger together again. And now we have social media platforms and stuff, so it's easier to get our message across. But if we don't stand together, we aren't being as loud as we could be. And I just think that quote totally uh, says that. Yeah, and I think that coming together um, as one and not so much as just I think coming together as one and not so much as just coming together as a group is really, really important. And I think that if we um, come together just as like, um, like, you know how like the human body can't function without all the organs, like everything works together. Yeah, if we came to get this, that's not really weird. But, like if we came together, like the human body, be good. That's the yes, only that's thing I can think of right now to explain it. That's a perfect analogy for it. It's perfect. It totally explains it. I just think it's really important that everyone um, works together, even men with women. It's really important to, to come together with women and help them um, in the industries. I think it's really important. It's kind of not just a woman thing, but everybody thing as well. Absolutely. Our voices are louder together. I think the next question I want to ask is, it's actually probably one of my favorite questions that we got, is what is the most important takeaway that you got from the book? Ooh, um, to me, the most important takeaway from this book is to never let anything stop you. You can do anything and you shouldn't let society's expectations and demands deter you from your goals. Um, use your voice and be loud. You can do anything. Never give up. Yeah, I think one of my biggest takeaways um, along with that was definitely just everyone is their own person and everyone copes in a different way and everyone deals with things in a different way and i think it's really really important to realize that and to kind of understand that everyone's going to have a, a different way of dealing with things and everyone's going to have a different experience than someone else especially if you have a different skin tone or you have a different religion everyone's going to experience something different and kind of judging people of the way they cope or experience it or the way they take something in is really important and um, I think it's important not to judge and just kind of let them be their own. Absolutely. So I know this question was like the one that we had gotten in the chat. So this next question I wanted to ask is out of the topics discussed in the book, which one stayed with you the most? I think definitely um, being either a person of color or um, being in a religion, the, the people that discussed those um their stories going through that was a lot of them were so so sad and ended with such a happy ending which i'm so so happy about but a lot of them were really really disappointing especially since that our world has come to a point like that it's so disappointing and i think that's really important you have to respect someone's religion or um just because they have a different skin tone doesn't mean they're indifferent absolutely um, one of the topics I think that stay with me the most is you can never be too loud. Um, we definitely need more books like Because I Was a Girl, and we're so excited to be able to share with you guys more books like that. Yeah, I think Because I Was a Girl is just um, a book that was truly just a huge project that has ended so well, and I'm hoping that we can spread the message about this book so more people read it because it's really good. Absolutely. I really was really inspired while reading it, and I think it has um, lots of great, important messages. For our next question that we got, um, a lot of people want to know how the book made us feel. Um, so this book made me feel inspired. It was really empowering to read how these strong, determined women didn't give up and kept going. But sometimes it was really disappointing to hear about all the challenges and hurdles uh, they had to overcome because of society's predetermined ideas and opinions about women and females in the workplace. I was really disappointed to see that this is still going on and see how far we still have to go for women to be treated equally. Yeah, and I know uh, one of the big feelings I felt through this book, I mean, I felt so many, it was like a roller coaster, because you have a story that is has some sad parts to it, but overall it's just a really inspiring story, and then you come across a story that's really sad based on um, that women's um, past history with family members or abusive ex-boyfriends. I think it's really, or being just an abusive relationship in general, is just such a, it 
it kind it made me sad, but then seeing their ending and how they came through that and overcame all that made me so happy and something that I look up to a lot. Yes, absolutely. And I know too, it's no guarantee, but I reached out to the author for this book too, and I'm hoping to get her on for an interview. No guarantee, but I think that would be amazing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Especially since I love this book. Yes, totally. Um, another question we got that I think is a really great one is what do you want to learn more about after reading this book? I definitely think um, something I'm actually going to look into a lot is um, a little bit more of uh, Islam because that was a very, very big topic in this book with a lot of people. And I think that's something I really want to look into because um, the people that wrote about it seemed so like even though you can't hear them talking, you it's like you could hear their motivation and their like the way they cared about it so much. And I definitely think that's something I'm going to look more into um, because I from this book that uh, religion is some a lot more religions I heard in this book is or things I want to look into because I've either never heard of them or just don't know that much about them. Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to learn more about the different events in history that are significant to growth in women equality. Um, one of the facts that really surprised me was that it wasn't until the 60s that Congress passed the Equal Pay Act. Um, this is really sad that it took them that long to address the issue, and it makes me wonder about the information and history behind the other laws passed to help female equality and about the laws passed that diminish female equality. Yeah, and I think that... Um obviously it taking that long to even even like see the problem is such a huge problem and i think that i just dropped it i think that um doing realizing more um problems within the industry with women is something that needs to be looked into more and i think that a lot of women that are in certain industries are just looked over and not really focused on as much as the men are. And I think it's really important that the women get the um, same amount of focus and attention that men get. Absolutely. And even to the fact too that after that law was passed, females are still not being paid as much as a man doing the same job. Yeah, and I think that is just so disappointing. And I know my dad, actually, um, I want to mention this thing. Um, my dad got a new boss who is a woman and who actually we have their um, job um, just physically, usually a woman cannot do um, just because they're not built the same way. And they hired a woman who was not getting the same pay. And um, my dad actually talked to his boss and they raised her pay equal to what the other people were getting paid because she deserved it. She's doing really well now. So um, that's something I just wanted to mention because I was so happy, especially since we were going to be talking about equal pay on here. So I think it's um, really important that people recognize that. And especially if you're a manager or something, you recognize that someone deserves equal pay um, and uh, gets it. Absolutely. And that's so amazing to hear, too. For our second to last question that someone asked, someone wanted to know, how do you think the book's title reflects on the book's content? Um, well, the book talks about the different struggles that women have faced uh, with their journeys in the workplace. So I totally think that the title, Because I Was a Girl, really reflects on the content. I also think the title being because I was a girl with the I, I think it makes it a lot more personal for any uh, woman that reads it, or it also makes it even more um, like kind of a man reads it or a boy reads it. It makes it even more just kind of real. And um, I think it just sticks out more and kind of shows the struggle that a lot of women go through. Absolutely. It's a super informal, uh, it's a super informative book for anybody to read. Yeah, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I would say that so much, but I, I just love the book. Yeah, totally. It was one of my favorite, like, memoir books I've read. I don't usually read that style of book, but this made me want to check out some more different ones about the same topic. Yeah, and I think that especially for being a memoir book, it was a very, very informative, and it was just, it was, it was very well written. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for our last question tonight for the book discussion, our last one is, who would you recommend this book to? Um, me, personally, I would rec recommend this book to um, any uh, preteen or younger girl or boy. Um, it's recommended to both 
genders really of any age because I think it's so, so important for uh, both genders to read. Absolutely. I would really recommend this book to women of all ages because of the like different genres and the time span too. It's uh, stories from women of all ages. Um, this book is especially great, like you said, for uh, tweens and teens, I think. I'm um, reading this book as a teen. There was a lot of important messages and themes that are really relatable and important and it's super inspiring. I also think that adults would relate to this book because of the themes are the themes discussed are relatable to all ages. I also think there's um, probably uh, there is I think one or two stories in here about um, being um, part of the LGBTQ plus community. I would strongly, strongly recommend any person that's of that community to read this book, um, especially, especially if you go by um, any other pronouns like they them. This book is so so important because there is a story in here about a person that goes by they them pronouns and is such such a good story and i think that anybody that's part of the lgbtq community should read this book because it is insanely insanely good absolutely so for anybody who's maybe interested in reading the book we have all the links in the uh, description for where to find the book it's a really pretty copy it has amazing information and stories inside of it and definitely if you want to read it definitely check that out absolutely so that was our book of the month that we chose. And for our next little thing, we're not doing a book, we're doing a movie. Yes, I am so excited for this one. This is actually a movie that I've never seen before. So I'm going to be watching it for the first time along with you guys. We picked the movie Moxie. I've watched this movie like 100,000 times. It's like, it's not brand new. It came out last year. It's, uh, you can find it on Netflix. Um, and it's about a couple of teenagers that go through some harassment. A couple of teenagers are women that go through some harassment at their high school and start a secret group called Moxie. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sorry if my background is being loud right now. My cat keeps on digging through his toy bucket. Yeah, and uh, it's raining outside right now, which I'm so happy about because that means I'm going to sleep like a baby. But... <laughs> I wish it was raining here. It's been like, it's been cooling down. It's been like in the 70s or something. I'm happy it's raining because when I got out of practice, it was nice to get drenched, which sounds weird, but I promise it was so nice to get drenched. <laughs> um, so I wanted to just go over really quick our episode plan for the month of December. So next week, we're going to be airing an interview we did with Caroline Scruggs, uh, a singer and vocal coach. Um, and then the week of the 14th, we're going to be airing an episode, we're going to be airing an interview with Bethy Allen and doing our movie discussion. And then the last two Wednesdays of the month, we are actually going to be taking off for winter break, but we will be back on January 4th. And we have a lot of new things planned for January, so make sure you stay tuned. And also, there is something I wanted to say on here. I know um, that both me and Lily do celebrate Christmas. Um, if you celebrate, if you don't celebrate uh, Christmas and you do Hanukkah um, or any other uh, religious thing other than Christmas, um, I would love for you guys to kind of write about what you do on Christmas Day um, on our Orchid Times group. And if you're comfortable, we'd love to share it with everybody because everybody's religions and um, traditions uh, deserve to be shared. Yes, absolutely. You guys can message us with your uh, writings or you guys can email it to us. We have all the information down below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on this episode. I read the book if you haven't. You can get an ebook version as well on Amazon. Absolutely. And we've also been doing holiday female entrepreneur promotions. They've been going so well so far. We're on like day five. So if you guys are a female with a small business or a website, please message us. We have spots open still for promotions and we would love to promote you on Orca Times. Yeah. And the promotions really, really do help. We've heard some great feedback. Absolutely. So make sure you guys tune in for our episode next week uh, with an interview with Caroline Scruggs. She is a musician and vocal coach, and she was so cool to talk to, and she had so much great information as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and this was an amazing, amazing episode. Make sure to watch, watch Moxie if possible, because I've seen it a million times. It's a great, great movie, I promise you. And it's perfect, perfect first movie choice. Thank you guys so much, so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. 
Yes, and make sure to follow the Orca Times page and stuff if you don't already so you uh, don't miss any of the content we'll be posting about the movie too. See you guys next week. Bye.